Okay. Okay. Yoo-hoo! Woo. All right. You see the excitement. Um, Get excited for Moshe. A round of applause, please. Yep. So uh, I didn't prepare any slides. I thought uh, it'll be more fun to just uh, go do my entire. Um, oppa, oh, that's so fun. Yeah, exciting, right? Um, yeah, so I, I thought I'll just do my entire talk as a live programming demo. We'll see how it works. If you see anything I'm doing wrong, feel free to shout out what I'm doing wrong. It'll be fun. So I want to talk to you about talks. Um, so talks is a tool to run your tests and your linters, right? You saw Roy had to run lint with like all kinds of magical arguments that you probably want to keep somewhere to know which magical arguments to, to run it with. Um, and you want to make sure that it always runs it in the same environment and with uh, the same dependencies. And you might want to check several different dependencies because you might be working from moving from one version of the library to the other. Tox helps you with all of that. And we will see a little bit on how to use Tox today. Um, so basically, I see Tox as something that helps you make your code better. Uh, it doesn't help you make your code more useful. So um, I started with the most useful code I can do that. Uh, and the way to do that is, of course, um, to call your code useful, right? That's clearly, it's all in the name. Um, yeah. Uh, and let's just start with uh, running talks. Um, I'll be running talks in a slightly different way than you usually run talks, uh, because I'll be giving it an explicit configuration file uh, that lets me um, show you how different configurations for talks will impact my code. Uh, so let's first start by actually seeing what's in the configuration file. So this is a pretty simple configuration file. All it's going to do is just run the unit test on my code using the PyTest test runner. Uh, it's among the most simplest uh, talks I and I I've ever written. But even that is useful. See, so it, it helps me, like it runs, it understands that if I call environment Py3.6, uh, it needs to um, create me a Python 3.6 uh, virtual env. Ooh, I think I might need Wi-Fi. Whew, exciting. Um, Casey, do you know how to set up the Wi-Fi here? Sorry. <laughs> yeah. Exciting, right, guys? It's the next. Uh, yeah, I should have started. The name of the laptop's MacGyver. You should just use a paper clip. <laughs> where's my? Where's my? OK. Oh, yeah. And uh, as you can see, tried to install the dependencies and didn't manage to. Now what I need to do is just find my mouse. Here we go. Here's mouse. Uh, and Wi-Fi not connected. Select network. OK. Box visitor, I'm assuming? Oh, yes. Yes. Uh, OK. And I'll let you type the secret password. It will let you. Yeah, so uh, among other things, Docs will download your dependencies from the internet. That's irrelevant. <laughs> uh, but hopefully, yes. Yeah. OK, so let's, let's try this again. Yeah, see, it's uh, Now you know it's live. not scripted. Totally live, <laughs> right, as you can see. Um, so yes, let's run it again. And it will recreate my environment. Uh, and like, it tried to install PyTest, because I told it I, I need PyTest. This is really important. And it found a problem. Uh, one apparently is not equal to two. That's a problem. My function is called useful return one. It should usefully return one. See, like I told you, the code is going to be hella useful. Um, let's look at the code. Woo! That's a lot of work to return one, but <laughs> let's just fix the immediate issue and rerun it. And it already made my code better. Not more useful, but better. Um, OK, so now let's uh, uh, try like a slightly uh, bigger thing. Um, so let's try running against PyPy. So sometimes there's like slight compatibility errors. PyPy is pretty compatible. I actually had to work hard to find incompatibility for this talk. Uh, and then other people suggested other ones, but they were more complicated, so I had to stick with this one. Um, so it will again run it for Python 3.6. And now it's creating a Python PyPy 3.5 environment. And uh, oh, I checked the size of int. Why would you ever try to check the size of int? That is like very silly. Uh, that is not useful. So let's remove that. Here, this is how easy it is to make your code compatible with PyPy. Just remove the useless stuff. <laughs> uh, 
And woohoo! Yeah, so far it's working well. Um, so that's good, right? Like um, good code, high quality. No, no more like weird uh, checking for uh, stuff. Now I'll do what uh, apparently Roy has uh, advised us against. And I will use Flake 8 uh, just because I need to fix all the errors and I don't want to spend all day here. So I will just have like uh, uh, Flake 8 see what it can find. So it's still running the test, and oh, ah, so I have a missing import, I am, uh, no, I mean, like unused import because I did not need it anymore now that I'm not checking the size of int, and I have uh, uh, too few blank lines. That's easy to fix. There's a blank line here. Move this guy. Oop. Let's see. So. Excellent. So let's see. It's, 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 uh, um, uh, now let's see uh, what else can we do to improve the code. Oh, right. Um, we want to measure the coverage, right? Like we have unit tests, but like what if we have code that is not unit tested? Um, so let's improve the coverage. Ah, uh, it's missing a line. What's line is missing? Line seven in useful py. Let's see what's that about. Yeah, line seven, not covered. Let's go write a unit test. Yeah, that's my useful code. Um, so, uh, I'm gonna add another one. Uh, and we call it test two. And we'll check that when you return two, you get two. Useful code. Let's see what it says now. And as is often the case in uncovered code, we've uncovered a bug. See what I did there? Uh, oh, tough crowd. <laughs> So, um, uh, return two also has a bug, I see. Yes, it's returning one. Since return two. Useful code. And uh, all green. Up. Oh, see? Uh, ha ha, indentation contains tabs. Oh, really live coding here. Huh? I did not actually do, do it in purpose, but see, it's actually finding problems in my code that I... None of you yelled out, right? Robots do it better. <laughs> uh, no, that's not... Huh. Where am I missing a space? Where, where do I have tabs? Oh. Ah, so um, let's... Uh, uh, another one nice thing about it, that we can only run the environment we care about if we need. So let's run the flake 8 and see. Uh, line 13, indentation is about a multiple of four. Oh dear lord. <laughs> <laughs> ah, indeed, indeed. How did it even work? <laughs> oh, excellent. So now let's run all the environments. Okay, so I, I can actually fix bugs in code. That's, that's uh, good to know. Um, anyway, um, but Tox is what helped me do that, right? So uh, Tox is basically your kind of uh, um, uh, um, what's the Swiss Army knife for like all your running tests. It will remember which arguments to run it, which. Python version to run it, especially good if you're moving from Python 2.7 to Python 3.6, or if you want to make sure that you keep compatibility with PyPy. It can install multiple versions of the libraries so that you can make sure that uh, you're compatible with all the versions of libraries that you say you're compatible with. It can run Flake 8 and PyLint and a bunch of other linters so that you can run all the linters and find all the problems in your code. Um, and yeah, that's it. That's all I have to say. Thank you, guys.
Um, so if anyone has any questions. I have a question. You have a question? Uh, why is it called tox? I have absolutely no idea. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's like an acronym, test something, something. I have a real question, though. Uh, <laughs> basically, how do you manage the boundary between something like Travis CI and Tox? Do you have Travis run your Tox, ah, or that's do you do ex something else? That's an excellent question. Someone might think I, I, you know, I know you from somewhere. Uh, ta -ta -ta. So w usually what they do is, um, as you can see uh, earlier, I, you can run it with a specific environment. So usually what they do is they have a uh, Travis run one environment per kind of parallel line, and then you run all the environments at the same time. Uh, it sucks up Travis resources, but it's good for me, so yay. Um, that's, that's usually what I do sometimes if I'm really in the mood. I'll add another uh, uh, special Travis talks test. The test that like, it matches exactly that I don't forget any environments for my talks file. Um, talks has something really useful for that uh, called minus L. Here we go, L. Uh, it will list all your environments, so you can make sure that your Travis configuration and your Tux configuration have not diverged. You can even make a test for it automatically on Travis. I am crazy and I do that. Very good. He's thought of everything. Um, I've been using Tux for like, I guess, a while. Uh, any other questions from people who don't work with me and see all my Tux configurations? <laughs> Tell me. Okay. Um, Awesome, cool, thank you guys.